जय हिंद वंदे मातरम नमस्ते दिस इज कुनाल मेहता फ्रॉम मेक मई साइंटिफिक एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टेक अप अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग चैप्टर फ्रॉम ग्रेड इलेवन येस वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द सिंपल हारमोनिक मोशन एंड आई ट्राई टू प्रोमिस दैट आई ट्राई टू मेक दिस चैप्टर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एज वेल एज वेरी ईजियर फॉर यू सो लेट्स डाइव इन इन टू द चैप्टर सो इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज सिंपल हारमोनिक मोशन यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर पीरियोडिक मोशन फर्स्ट then oscillatory motion and after understanding oscillatory motion you will understand about the simple harmonic motion so oscillatory motions sorry the periodic motion are those kind of motion that repeats continuously that repeats continuously after a definite time interval on a definite path these three things are must for uh, the periodic motion let's take an example the earth which is moving around the sun the earth moves in a circular path actually it's an elliptical path in gravitation chapter but we need not to worry about that right now so the earth moves around this circular path which is fixed it will not deviate from this circular path so the definite path condition is satisfied over here after one revolution the earth is found here and the time that it takes is 365 days ignoring the leap here by the way right so the second time when it performs the same motion it will take 365 days right and the sun would be at the center of that circle circular path so the motion repeats itself on a fixed path and in a definite time interval that's why we are calling this as a periodic motion if you look at the hour hand of the clock say for example uh, 2 pm 2 pm in the afternoon so this hour hand will again come back the tip of the hour hand will perform the circular motion and again will come back after 12 hours and it will be 2 am then right again that tip will come back after 2 or 12 hours and it will be 2 pm again so you can see that the motion is repeated again and again and again on a fixed path after constant 12 hours of interval time so this 12 hour that is the fixed time interval is also known as time period okay now if you look at this uh, minute hand if the tip of the minute hand is over here after 1 hour or 60 minutes it will come back over here in case of the second hand it will come back after 60 seconds okay that is 1 minute so these are all the easier examples of the periodic motion let's go ahead yes oscillatory motion oscillatory motions are a type of periodic functions you must understand that oscillatory motions are periodic but they are to and fro or back and forth okay so let's take an example of a simple pendulum this is the point of suspension a string and the bob now if you leave this bob i mean just give a little bit of push you will see that this bob will execute the oscillatory motion it will go to and fro to and fro along a fixed path in a fixed time interval and this motion is repeated after and after again and again that's why we call this motion as oscillatory motion another example let's take an example of a block which only moves between point a and b so suppose this block goes in this direction stops again turns back comes here again comes here stops again comes back to the same point and it keeps on moving like this so its velocity decreases decreases becomes zero increases becomes maximum decreases becomes zero again increases becomes maximum this is a back and forth or again you may call this as a to and fro and this will keep on happening so the path is fixed repetitive in nature and it finishes the one complete oscillation in fixed interval of time so these are the examples of oscillatory motion this needs to be very clear that all the periodic motions all the oscillatory motions are definitely periodic but all periodic motions are never oscillatory let's recall that example of the earth moving around the sun that was an example of circular motion that is not back and forth or to and fro motion the earth doesn't oscillate to and fro around the sun so all the oscillatory motions are definitely periodic but all periodic motions are not oscillatory okay let's move ahead and understand and get a very clear understanding about the oscillatory motion in depth so what i have over here is the following we have a block we have a block at let's say at point a 
and these are the two ends of a straight line okay now what is going to happen is this block a is being pushed with some force now its velocity is maximum here because a very large amount of force is given to it now this goes in this direction and its velocity decreases 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 and that block stops here so the velocity is zero now it again turns back and again its velocity increases increases and becomes maximum here again and then again the velocity decreases 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 and the block again stops over here again the velocity it reverts back and its velocity increases increases and becomes maximum this is an example of oscillatory motion along a fixed path right there is a fixed path and in a definite time interval this all things are happening we'll dive a little bit deep inside into the problem now now just look at the entire motion between let's look at the entire motion between a and b okay now what is happening is this block moves in this direction and its velocity decreases decreases and becomes zero so this is the direction of velocity in the direction of motion the block goes in this in this direction slows down and stops so there is a deacceleration in this direction so acceleration is in the opposite direction but when the block comes back from here to here the velocity direction changes reverses because the motion happens in this direction velocity in this direction but the velocity increases increases and becomes maximum so the velocity increase in is taking place in this direction so acceleration is also in this direction let's go on the other side this block velocity decreases decreases becomes zero so from point a to point c the velocity is in this direction but the acceleration is in the opposite direction because it slows down in this direction now the block goes again in this direction and velocity increases increases and becomes maximum so that means acceleration is in this direction velocity also in this direction now if you look at this half part of the entire picture this half part you see that the velocity is fluctuating but the acceleration is in one particular direction in this part also the velocity is changing its direction but acceleration is in one direction only now if i want to connect this oscillatory motion with acceleration as well as velocity it's little bit difficult so what am i am going to do is the following now remember this part very well that we are dealing with the vectors here right acceleration velocity so any displacement along plus x axis positive any displacement along negative x axis the displacement would be considered as negative now as simple as that this is x axis and this block is performing oscillatory motion along x axis like this and this right i am going to consider this as the origin so the coordinates are 0 0 y axis anyhow this entire on this axis y axis is going to be 0 right now this goes from here it has maximum velocity now velocity decreases decreases and becomes zero here so here it stops correct and this point let me call this point as a this point as b and this point as c now what is happening in over here if you look carefully the velocity was in this direction acceleration was in the opposite direction because the body slowed down but the displacement is in this direction and displacement is shown by x because we are moving along x axis so if you look carefully the acceleration was in this direction but the displacement is in this direction by the way remember displacement is a vector quantity and the tail of the displacement vector is always at origin and the head of the vector is always towards the final position or the object all right now if you make this object go in this direction so velocity decreases decreases becomes zero increases increases becomes maximum again decreases decreases becomes zero here so the velocity is zero again it stops and then and only then it can turn back so 
entire motion happens between point C and point D. All right. Now, from here to here, displacement vector x is in this direction. But as I said, it slows down in this direction. So, the acceleration is in the opposite direction. Now, wherever you are on this side or this side, it's very easy to understand that acceleration is proportional to minus x vector. If you take vector notations, then it is very easy to say that acceleration anywhere, wherever, whether you are on this side or this side, the acceleration vector is always opposite to that of the displacement vector, right? That's why in this entire chapter, we are not going to consider velocity, we are going to consider acceleration and the displacement relationship because velocity is kind of confusing and the displacement and acceleration anywhere they are always opposite. Now simple if I multiply both sides by the mass this is this block has mass m so m a proportional to minus m x and this is nothing but the force. So the force is also proportional to minus x because m is constant so I am simply writing this as proportional right. So force is proportional to the x now which force we are talking about that is restoring force I will talk about that later. So from this entire picture what is understood that in oscillatory motion remember this very well that in oscillatory motion acceleration is proportional to x minus x ok. Now one more thing I want to highlight this is one equation of the SHM. Let me give you one another, sorry, this is an equation of oscillation, oscillatory motion. I will give you one another example. Suppose if I write acceleration is e proportional to, let us say proportional to x raised to cube minus. Does it still hold? Is this still an equation of oscillatory motion? The answer is yes, it is still an equation of oscillatory motion because if I take x as positive or negative, it does not matter acceleration must be always opposite to x that kind of equations are always of oscillatory motion. So if I take x as plus a automatically becomes minus if I take x as minus minus cube is again minus so minus minus becomes plus so a becomes plus. So you can say that this is also an equation of oscillatory motion acceleration proportional to minus x raised to 5. This is also an equation of oscillatory motion because in any oscillatory motion acceleration and displacement must have opposite signs. So this is not an equation of oscillatory motion because if I take x as negative, negative square is positive, x is also negative, acceleration is also negative. So these kind of equations are not an example of oscillatory motions, right? So oscillatory motions happen, they are to and fro or back and forth, they happen, uh, their motion happens to be between two fixed points. Acceleration is always opposite to that of the displacement and these are the different equations of the oscillatory motion. Now you will understand that what is simple harmonic motion, right? So let us clear off all these things. Simple harmonic motion, a kind of oscillatory motion that happens on a straight line. So the example that we just took was an example of SHM, right. You can look at the pendulum of a bob which moves on a curved path. That is not an example of simple harmonic motion provided the angle is very, very small. In that condition, the almost very small curve can be regarded as a straight line. So for a longer, larger oscillations, you cannot consider the oscillatory motion to be simple harmonic. Simple harmonic motions are those oscillatory motions that happen in a straight line, on a straight line, right? So that is this one. Happen, they happen to be a longer straight line that is this one. Restoring force is always proportional to the displacement. Just now we saw that F actually it was acceleration that was proportional to minus X but I had multiplied MM on both sides so I used to get F, MA as F proportional to again M so that is why M is removed and proportionality sign. So it is always it is also satisfied. Equilibrium position is an another name given to mean position. I will come back to this after a few minutes. Harmonic oscillations, they are represented by sine and cosine functions. They have constant amplitude as well as single frequency. I will come back to that as well. 
okay so just now we discussed about this example in which a block was here this was point a this was say let let's say point b and this was point c correct now we called point a as the origin now i'm saying that let's imagine that this point a is exactly at the middle point of a and b then this is known as the mean position mean means it's almost at the mean or the middle part so this is the mean position and since the block was had zero velocity over here then and only then it can turn back this is known as extreme position the block used to stop over here this is also the extreme position so two extreme position one mean position and the distance between the mean and the extreme position is known as the amplitude a on both sides of course the amplitude is the maximum displacement all displacements are measured from the mean position so if the body is here then from here to here this is plus a displacement if the body is here then mean position to here minus a is the displacement or the amplitude so that is how this is how we define the basic terms